All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to take a little bit of a look at this micro PA 50 amplifier for HF frequencies on amateur radio. Now I had this for a few months and I really wasn't that happy with it. So I haven't been using it. It's a little finicky. And one of the problems that it has is that it doesn't correctly uh, read SWR from your antenna. And as a result, the SWR protection will kick in and you have to power cycle this thing. Now you can disable the SWR protection, but I don't want to use or trust a device that doesn't correctly read SWR. Now it's my understanding that this new version of firmware fixes that problem. How exactly it does it, I don't know. I don't know if it disables the SWR protection, which is something that you can do in the settings, or if it sets this thing up to correctly read it and then it works as, it, as it's designed. I don't really know. Now, some folks have taken this apart and soldered a resistor on the SWR bridge, and I'll show you that. But um, I never did that, and it turns out that the manufacturer doesn't recommend doing that. And lo and behold, a few months down the road, we have the new, uh, the new firmware. So in this video, we're going to update that firmware. And I wanted to show you something that you're going to need in order to do this. Now, this is what some folks will call a UART, but it is a USB to serial adapter. This one has an FTDI chip much like your programming cables for your HTs. And much like your programming cables for HTs, there's different chipsets that you can use uh, for this particular type of device. Some of them are recommended, some of them aren't. Uh, the FTDI was not specifically called out in the instructions, and we'll take a look at that. But uh, we're gonna give it a whirl and see what happens. If you need a partner for your new project, look no further than PCBWay.com. Not only does PCBWay.com offer PCB manufacturing capabilities, they also offer assembly services for surface mount parts and through hole assembly. When you partner with PCBWay.com, you can take advantage of their multiple PCB capabilities. This is fantastic because you can stick with one vendor and not have to involve many vendors in the solution. PCBWay.com partners with just about every shipping provider that you can think of. They offer worldwide shipping to over 200 countries, making sure that you can get the parts and the project components that you need to make your project a success. All right, so I cracked the case of this thing uh, open and I should have actually shown you a couple things before I do that. It just powers on when you plug it in. So here you can see that it is booting up. And let's try that one more time and see if we can actually see the firmware version that is on this device. And it says version 1.9. So the version that we're going to upgrade to is 2.6. Let me zoom in so we can take a little bit of a look at the innards of this thing and talk about it. Since we're poking around with the innards, I don't have this thing powered on. But uh, here is our SWR bridge. And then right here you can see there is a little resistor. And if we take a look at that, you can see that it says 49 something. I can't quite read that. But anyhow, what a lot of folks have done is, is that they have soldered a, another additional resistor like this across that. And by doing that, what they're doing is kind of tricking this machine and messing with the way that it sees or reads uh, SWR. And as I mentioned, I don't think I like that idea. Looking at this, it actually looks pretty well built compared to some of the other uh, cheaper Chinese uh, amplifiers that you see on the market. But one thing I wanted to point out is, is that the MOF sets that this uses in its amplification stage are not RF um, MOSFETs. These are regular electrical MOSFETs. And some people say, hey, that's a bad thing. You shouldn't do that. So if these do blow out, it's relatively easy to fix. And you can probably get more appropriate MOSFETs off of like DigiKey or Mauser or something along those lines. Now for this particular firmware upgrade, we're gonna to need to connect cables to these pins. And I'll show you a diagram for the pinouts, uh, which each one of these does. Now when we connect that to our UART device, which is right here, and I'll roll a picture of this in real quick so you can see the pinouts. But you need to take the TX from this and hook it to the RX on the amplifier. And then the RX on this needs to go to the TX. If you don't do that right, this ain't gonna work. Here's just a quick uh, picture that shows a zoom in of the pinouts on our UART device. And you can see that they are labeled. Now you want to make sure that you get these correct when you hook them up to your amplifier or terrible things can happen. Okay, here in the manual you can see there's a section called Micro PA Short Wave Power Amplifier Firmware Upgrade Tutorial. 
And it says required tools, a TTL, five volt level serial port module, small board. You can use the CH340, the CH341, the CP2102, and other serial port modules. As I mentioned, we're using FTDI. It says it is recommended not to use the dreaded PL2303. Okay, so what you can see here is the pinouts on the board. They're not marked on the board, so you definitely want to use this reference. And you can see the TX, the, R, uh, the TXD, the RXD, the DTR, the 5 volt, and the ground. And then what the pinouts go to here uh, on your device. Keep in mind, there's a crisscross of the TX and RX. Uh, I pointed that out. Also down here, it's going to be very difficult to read because the font in this document totally sucks. But it says if the small board of the serial port module does not have a DTR, which mine does not, it says it can also be connected to the RTS. And that is the one that I connected to on my board. And you can see that in the photo that I just posted a few seconds ago. And then we are going to use an application to do the programming. And let me see if I can show you what that is. And that is right here. This application is called AVR DUDESS. And that is an executable that goes around a command line utility. I'll have a link where you can download everything that you need into a single directory. You have to unzip it. It uses a zip compression called RAR, R-A-R. You can use a tool called WinRAR, WinRAR to uh, uncompress this. And then when we uh, open up the application, it should work fine. One of the things I want to point out is, is that it does have a configuration file and it pulls down the configuration of the person who used this uh, device, probably in a test lab or something along those lines. Anyhow, we're going to have to locate our COM port and I'll show you how to do that. We want to make sure our baud rate is set to 115200. You're going to have to pick the Arduino from the top drop down and then the AT Mega 328P specific Arduino type. When you go ahead and you do this flash, you're going to use this box to browse towards your hex file. I'll have a link where you can download the hex file, which is going to be your firmware. And you don't want to check this box down here that says flash EEPROM, so leave that one blank. Then you want to come down there and you want to hit the start, and then the process is going to run. Okay, I did want to show that I do have all my pins connected, and you can see them connected right here. Now, I did unplug the fan, which is sitting over here, and the reason I did that is because it would have been difficult to get these pin connectors. These are DuPont pins, um, or DuPont connectors, connected correctly. And that just goes right here to my device, which now has a red light blinking on it. I didn't read the instructions for the device. I have no idea what that red light means. Okay, I connected the USB to my computer and it made some bings and bongs and it installed the FTDI driver. I'm using Windows 10. And I also had to power up the amplifier. So I just have that plugged into my battery. And when that happens, I get a list of devices in my device manager. I want to take a look at this because it's very important that you get the COM port. My COM port is not going to be the same as your COM port. Well, it might be, but it probably isn't. Anyhow, if you look at this, it says USB serial port COM10, and that is the one that we're going to use. Okay, I downloaded the executable and I ran it, and this is what I have. And so what I want to do, I want to come over here and I want to hit this drop down and I'm going to pick COM10 because that is the COM port that we just looked at in Device Manager. My baud rate is already set. My GRP programmer is set for Arduino and it's set for the AT Mega 328P board, which is all correct. So what I want to come over here is I want to click this Do Program button and we're going to see what, oh, I got to browse to the folder that uh, has my file. This is what I was talking about earlier. If you can see this, it says users KVLAM, and that ain't me. And so that is whoever used this and it got saved to the config file. So I can click on these three dots and then I can browse to this. This is the hex file that I want to use and I'm going to hit open. And you can see that has changed here in my, uh, in my window. So all that being said, let me hit do program and we'll see what happens. Hopefully it works. And right now it says that it is writing. And I guess that's a good thing. So let's let this run and we're gonna come back and see what happens. Okay, now it's done. A couple of things came across the screen and it says avrdo.exe. That would be the command line utility, done. Thank you. 
All right, so we're going to shut this down and then we're going to take a look at our amplifier and see if the firmware update worked. Okay, we just did the flash and our amplifier is powered up. Let me go ahead and cut the power to this. And now I got to plug it in one handed, which is never an easy thing to do. And I probably should have prepared a little bit better for this, but I'm a big dummy and I did not. So let me see if I can figure this out. And that says version 2.6. So it looks like our update was successful. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the case back together and I'm going to probably play around with this a little bit. If there's enough interest, I will give a demo of how this amplifier works. I think most people who have it already know and uh, you can see it then. Anyhow, thanks for watching everybody. Hope this was helpful.